Well, David Bean is the Parliament and Government Relations Manager at the Countryside Alliance. Evening to you, David. We've got the story today from Sandringham. Three members of Animal Rising stealing three sheep. Uh, we still don't know where they are. Um, they've stolen them and then they've taken them to a place of hiding. What do you make of it all? Well, of course, animal rights activists stealing animals from various types of places, including farms, uh, in some cases it's been research labs, is nothing new. But I think what's interesting about this particular case is the organization responsible, as you said, it's Animal Rising, uh, which only recently changed its name to that, having originally been founded as Animal Rebellion. Uh, and as you can tell from the name, uh, they were an offshoot of Extinction Rebellion, which is obviously very well known for a lot of its protests that are going on. Um, the interesting thing about that is that it's essentially supposed to have been started off as a protest uh, against uh, in, in relation to climate change. Uh, the central contention has been that livestock farming is in some way worse for the environment uh, than other forms. Uh, in fact, just today, there was another story uh, where the uh, pr protesters from Just Stop Oil uh, did a protest at the Chelsea Flower Show. And they said on Twitter that they were concerned uh, about the impact of climate change in terms of the global food supply, food production. I think what we can see is that there's such an inherent contradiction in what these movements' goals really are. Because if their concern is about uh, global food supply and people in the global south, as they put it, not having enough food to eat, then the last thing that they should be doing is attacking livestock farming in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Because if we were seriously to damage that sector, we would end up in a situation where we would be so much more reliant on food imports, which of course come from the same global food markets that the people who are living in countries that are worse off are having to draw from as well. And, and if All nothing else, David, that reminds us of why we have to be conscious of our own food security in, in an island where actually a lot of the land is apt for growing grass, and grass is a very good way of, uh, of producing high-protein food, also called uh, livestock. Uh, you mentioned the tweet from Just Stop Oil. I wonder if you saw the tweet from Animal Rising. Uh, it ran, as a nation of animal lovers, how can we justify harming gentle babies? Um, th this idea that sheep are babies, you know, human infants are babies, um, this anthropomorphization, which I think is is increasingly prevalent, you could argue, that people people have got this disnified view of the food chain, of the way nature, which as you know, is red in tooth and claw. Uh, it, it, the, the world that some people want to live in is, is cuddly and unthreatening and doesn't involve um, any tough choices about where you source your food from. But one thing we can agree on, even if Animal Rising don't, is that uh, a lamb is a lamb, not a baby. Yes, that's exactly right. And I think the, the term you use of anthropomorphism is exactly the right one, because in essence, people are ascribing human characteristics to animals, uh, and they're sort of treating them as though uh, animals have the same uh, capabilities as humans uh, in terms of feeling emotions, reasoning. That's why people refer to animal rights in the first place. I don't agree with the concept of animal rights, because I think that if you are a, a being of any sort which is to have rights then you must be capable of reasoning and existing within a kind of a moral framework and, and exercising responsibilities and exercising exactly. responsibilities um, yes indeed uh, I just wonder where this stops. I wonder when, in, if sometimes really think people think this through. I've argued before that part of the problem here is that people think, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're cuddly activists. They're not doing any harm, really. But if you look into the, 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 the long-term objectives and the ideology of some of these organisations, they, they, the, the, for the first principles are they want to stop any harm to animals. And that ultimately ends up, for instance, with taking a view on all domesticated animals, not just those that enter the food chain, but those we keep as pets. Uh, so those 10 million dog owners in the UK who think animal rights have no place in their life and no threat to their future enjoyment of a companionship of an animal need to think again. 
Yes, indeed. And I think another organization that is uh, very much, uh, that that very much uh, characterizes them is PETA, uh, which does have a UK offshoot, although they're obviously a lot more prominent over in the United States of America. Uh, and they have had members who've gone on record saying that they think it would be better for an animal to be dead than to be kept as a pet. You know, a lot of these times they're talking about uh, cats and dogs that are beloved members of the families that they're part of. Uh, and yet because of this ideological view that animals and humans should, in a sense, be kept separate, um, that, that humans should have nothing really to do with animals except perhaps watching them from a very great distance in the wild, uh, that's what leads you to this kind of conclusion. There will be, David, those people who say, from animal rights groups, and I'm mindful of what you said about the use of the word rights, but I can't think of an alternative way of describing them. People would know what we mean. Sure. Um, the, well, that, the, I mean, that is, that is how they would describe it, themselves. Indeed. They obviously, uh, they take a different view. And, and, and part of their pitch is, we don't need, we don't need meat in the food chain. We've got, we've got plant-based alternatives. Uh, the Observer uh, on Sunday pointed to the fact that um, we may have seen uh, peak veganism uh, in the UK. Um, the, the headline ran, uh, while it's claimed the global vegan market may be uh, worth as much as £50 billion by 2030, sales of many products in the UK have flatlined or fallen. What's going on? Well, this is the thing. I mean, when, when you project... Uh, future growth of markets, um, it tends to be based on looking at an upward trajectory and assuming that it's going to go on forever. But I think, honestly, the number of people who are persuadable to fully become vegan is going to have a, a ceiling to it. Uh, and we may very well have reached that ceiling already at this point. Is it a ceiling that we've reached? David Bean, who's with the Countryside Alliance, says maybe we have. Has veganism hit its peak. 